Hello there, Gut Squad. This is Cecily, as always. So, today I'm actually doing a requested video. I think this is the first time I've ever gotten a suggestion from a subscriber and have actually gotten the chance to film a video for it. So, I'm really, really excited. This commenter was really sweet and said, Hey, based on your last video of all the 10 foods that I can't really eat anymore, what are 10 foods that you can eat or that your body does tolerate really, really well? I thought that that was a fantastic suggestion and I decided to run with it. <laughs> now, I want to just make a quick note. I am so sorry about what happened in my last video. I completely messed up the numbering. For some reason I started counting up and then down and it got really confusing. So I'm so sorry about that. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Please forgive me for that. Now, in today's video, we're gonna talk about, like I said, 10 things that I can eat now that I absolutely love that really do complement my system really well and have never really given me too much of a problem. I will put a slight asterisk <laughs> here and say, this took me a really long time to come up with. This list was tough for me because honestly, I don't really have like 10 things off the top of my head that I can think, these are all the things I eat in a day. I don't normally eat more than three or four different types of things in my daily diet. So a lot of these things are actually treats for me. A lot of these things are actually things that are kind of a treat meal that I don't eat very often for whatever reason. So I will go through my list. I'm so excited to walk through all this with you guys. I know a lot of you may have different food restrictions based on whatever it is you have, be it Crohn's or celiac disease or whatever it might be. Everyone's a little bit different and a lot of us have to take into account not only the type of food, how bulky it is, but also the macronutrients and like the sugar and calories and fat. So I get that people just have restrictions based on what kinds of foods they can eat and I think that's really poignant to mention. So we're gonna get into the top 10 right now. The first thing on my list, number 10, is sugar-free popsicles. Sugar-free popsicles are one of my favorite like sweet kind of icy things to eat. I love, I used to love ice cream and stuff as a kid. So it was really hard for me when I heard like no more ice cream. <laughs> that was that was a tough pill for me to swallow because I absolutely love ice cream. The sugar-free popsicles kind of are usually like a dinner thing or after dinner thing that I'll eat to feel like I've had dessert. They're kind of satiating. I usually eat like four at a time. <laughs> I go through them really, really quickly. Non-sugar-free popsicles wouldn't hurt me necessarily, but um, as I've mentioned, ostomates have to be very careful with the amount of sugar that they eat because it can cause dumping episodes. And as an ileostomate, someone who's prone to high output, it's just smarter for me to keep sugar out of my diet in general. The next thing to talk about is gum, especially sugar-free gum, but I do cheat sometimes and have sugar gum. <laughs> I love gum. I feel like gum is one of the things that's helped me since I was about like 15, 16, really curb my appetite or curb my cravings. It helps my satiety. Sometimes I'll eat gum. I find that I eat gum most frequently when I finished a meal that I felt was too small and I'm like, oh, I'm still hungry. God damn it. So I'll just eat the gum or chew the gum. I don't eat gum, don't eat gum kids. I'll chew the gum and I'll feel like I've actually eaten more than I have. I know it's not a foolproof plan, honestly, because a lot of times gum, you know, for some people it can make them hungrier, feeling like they should be eating something, but they're not. For me, it doesn't really have that effect. For me, it just helps satiate me a little bit. The next thing is, is kind of a cheat, like sweet for me. It's something that I do when I'm craving sweets and I want something that I can chew on and like actually feel like I've eaten. These are smart sweets. Some of you may have heard of these. They're kind of sweeping the nation. They're a big deal only because they say, kick sugar, keep candy. That's their little catchphrase. And the reason is that they're very low in sugar based on the serving size. Now they're not super low in calorie or anything. There's about 90 calories for this whole packet, but they have very little sugar and very few carbs. So they're really good for people who are trying to make like macros work for their diet. They give me like that nice punch of citric acid and, and, and sourness that I crave sometimes. So yeah, if you can't have Sour Patch Kids because you're an ostomate and it has way too much sugar for you or even a diabetic, Smart Sweets are a really good way to go. Next thing is chicken broth and other types of broth, including vegetable broth or beef broth or beef bouillon, like all these things. I can have broths. Um, I actually tend to put them in my diet quite a bit. They're usually a midday thing that I do when I'm really hungry around lunchtime. 
I'll typically have like a cup of broth or maybe a few cups of broth over the course of a few hours. I find broth is really nice not only because it obviously doesn't cause me any problems with bloating or blockage symptoms or anything like that, but it's also just warming. It's it, I get bone broth, so it's kind of heartier than normal broth. I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that like broth is my favorite food, but I would say that's probably one of the most useful things to me. Broth can satiate you, but it won't add bulk to your stool, which is what I mainly use it for. <laughs> Next thing is codfish. I absolutely love cod. Cod is a beautiful white fish. It has a very meaty texture and it's not too fishy. I rely on fish for the majority of my protein. I would say probably about 70 to 80 percent of my protein in a day comes from daily fish consumption. So when I'm feeling very, very nauseated, it's tough for me to eat fishy fish, you know? So I tend to grab like tuna so or swordfish. So I tend to gravitate toward codfish because cod doesn't really taste like fish if you cook it a certain way. It doesn't really have that fishiness, that like weird texture or taste that you would associate with like a really gamey fish. So I appreciate cod. It's been my go-to when I'm feeling nauseated, but I still have to eat something. It usually doesn't make me feel more nauseous or vomit or anything like that. So cod is a very good one for people who need their protein intake. They need protein, they need a protein source but they can't handle the fishiness of most fish. Ginger and ginger candies. So the candy of choice for me, and I've mentioned this in another video, are gingins. I absolutely adore these little things. They're so good. Gingins are not too sweet and they have sort of a, like a warmth to them because ginger is kind of like a warming or kind of spicy flavor. <laughs> so I absolutely adore gingins. I can't eat them all the time because gingins tend to have a lot of sugar. They are candy. It's just ginger flavored candy. It's kind of like a caramel. So I love eating gingins, but I can't really have a ton of it because like I said, too much sugar means dumping, means blood sugar issues. I have to be careful with both of those things. So I try to keep my sugar intake down. When I'm feeling like I need a sweet treat or I'm feeling really nauseated, I tend to gravitate toward gingins because gingins are obviously infused with ginger and ginger is one of the most powerful natural antiemetics. That means medication or a substance that reduces nausea. I'll eat those and feel a little bit better. Feel just a little bit less like the room is spinning and I'm gonna throw up. So yeah, gingins have really come through for me in the clutch. Next one is another like sort of treat food that I don't really eat too, too often. I love marshmallows and marshmallows actually have a really important purpose in my life. I'll throw up a little bit of evidence here, but there has been some pretty interesting evidence to say that marshmallows and the consumption of marshmallows can reduce an ileostomate's output. Now this is based on PubMed studies that I've read that basically just monitor people who do eat marshmallows with ileostomies and people who do not. And they found that in the group that did eat marshmallows, there was significant reduction in dumping episodes. So here's a little trick. Sometimes you're having like a really dumpy day, right? There's stool falling out of your stoma and you just can't stop it. Well, the best way to go about stopping it if you need to do a bag change and you obviously don't want to leak stool all over your bag while you're changing it <laughs> is to eat marshmallows. I found this out pretty early in my ostomy journey and I've used it, that trick, quite a few times, especially when I was having prolapses. So guys, just remember, if you're ever having a really dumpy day and you can't get your ostomy to stop outputting and you need to change your bag, try a marshmallow, try a few marshmallows. It might actually help you. Next one carrots. I love carrots, <laughs> but I will say I haven't really been eating them too much lately. The only reason is that the last time I got a bowel blockage, carrots is what they pulled out. And I don't know, there's just been something really weird about eating carrots ever since then for me. So I'm sure I will go back to carrots at some point, but just for now, I've been finding that my daily life without them isn't terrible. And I don't know, I just have like that PTSD remembering when I ate carrots last and when I felt in so much pain and I don't know, I just haven't really wanted to eat them recently. That's just a minor thing to point out, but carrots in general are very digestible and and they're pretty delicious, so I do miss them. Second to last food that I love and can have still is Arctic Zero. Now, Arctic Zero is kind of 
my go-to for dessert. I know I said sugar-free popsicles are one. They're one that I have probably more frequently. Um, I probably eat more popsicles than Arctic Zero. The reason being that Arctic Zero does have some guar gum in it, so it can be kind of stool bulkening, I, I would say. But in general, it's actually really easy on my GI. Great thing about this is it's no dairy. It has very low glycemic index, which means it has very little sugar, very few carbs. And it's also one of those foods that will satiate me, but won't make me feel too much in pain afterwards. I will say also that it's great for when I'm on any kind of solid food fast. When I don't eat any solid foods, I'm only on liquids. For instance, at the hospital, sometimes they'll make it so that you can only have liquids or clears. And Arctic Zero usually falls under the liquid category. So maybe you can persuade your doctor into letting you have some Arctic Zero instead of something else that might be more sugary or have dairy or have some allergen in it. So it's very low allergen. It's no gluten, no dairy, no egg, and it's free from most like nuts as well. So I know people have nut allergies. It's another really good inclusive food that a lot of people can eat. And it's pretty satisfying. It's actually really good. Don't expect Ben and Jerry's. It's not Ben and Jerry's, but it is, it is pretty tasty. So I would say uh, the chocolate peanut butter is one of my favorite ones. And it's why my freezer almost always has chocolate peanut butter it's Arctic Zero. Okay. <sighs> last food. The last food is also my favorite food that I can still eat. Favorite food maybe of all time besides turkey legs? I don't know. I do love turkey legs. That would be salmon sashimi. It's basically sushi without any of the rice or avocado or seaweed, any of that stuff that they normally put with sushi. I just can't have the sushi part, but I can have the fish. So you can go to a Japanese restaurant and ask for the fish to be sashimi style, and they'll give you just beautiful slices of the fish without any actual rice or starches or vegetables or crazy sauces. It's literally just the fish. I love sashimi. Salmon. It's probably my favorite fish of all time. It's another fish that's not very fishy. It tastes meaty. It has a very meaty filling texture. The fat and the omegas are extremely good for my brain, my skin, my hair, other areas of my body that probably don't get a ton of omega nutrients every single day. As I, you can probably see, my diet is very myopic and does not have a lot of variation in it. So having even just a little bit of that fish protein, fish fat, fish nutrients, Nutrients. These are all really important for me on a daily basis. I notice a huge difference when I stop eating fish for whatever reason, be it a fast or be it time in the hospital, whatever it is. If I stop eating fish, I have a lot of really negative symptoms. So I would say salmon sashimi is the number one, not only because of the way it tastes and it feels in my mouth, <laughs> but also the way it makes my body feel. The salmon sashimi probably gives me the most energy of anything that I eat. It probably also gives me the most feeling of satiety and the most feeling that I've had enough food for the day. So salmon is a go-to for me. Um, I would say if you guys out there are looking for better protein sources that maybe won't irritate your stomach or your GI as much as like land meats such as beef and chicken, look to fish because fish has been where I found most of my success in my diet with introducing new protein types. I love fish in general, but salmon is my favorite fish, then probably cod, but they're all good and they're all good for you. So like I said, guys, this was a really tough list for me to come up with. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know the things that do work with my body. And I'm really hoping that some of you try some of these foods for yourself. They are great ways to stay satiated and to stay healthy and to stay active because the last thing you want to do is feel like you're not eating. <laughs> it's a terrible feeling to start. I encourage you, even if it's a lot of trial and error, just work through the foods that you know don't hurt you or that you think won't hurt you. And yeah, maybe once in a while, like I did with carrots, something that you trusted for a really long time ends up hurting you. I can't guarantee you that that's not going to happen. But I can say that the day you stop trying new things is a sad one. So please Please open yourself up to new things. I'm sure I'll find new things in the future that will be even better for my system than things like Arctic Zero, you know? I, I'm looking forward to a day where I can eat more of the foods that I love and uh, less of the foods that are like broth and just sort of take up space in my stomach but aren't really meant to be food. Also, please guys, let me know what your top 10 foods that you can eat are or if you agree with me about any of these things. If you tried things like Jinjins or Smart Sweets, let me know. I'm super curious. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye everyone.
wanted to just let you guys know that um, I have something positive to share with you. So remember how a while back I had mentioned that my wound that was from my old ostomy site had still not healed and taken forever for it to even close a little bit? Well. Apparently, uh, when I was in the hospital, the wound closed, and they think it's because the antibiotics probably kicked out if there was any infection. Uh, so, my wound is healed, it's closed. I can show you guys real quick. Yep, see that? Totally closed. I'm thrilled. So, yeah, it doesn't look the greatest yet. It's still taking a while for it to recover. It will take a little while for it to like completely heal over. There's still some swelling, but my god, that surgery was in October and it took until like March for it to close. So, let's just all bless up for a minute because I am super thrilled. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Okay, I'm going back.